Proverbs here. So we're going to start with Proverbs 3, 3 through 6. My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart. For they will prolong your life many years and bring you prosperity and prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Find them around your neck. Write them on the tablet up for your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways and all Him. And He will make your path straight. So be it. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. So, are you up on your Bible reading? If I scared you, we're not to Proverbs yet. We don't get to Proverbs until June 3rd, okay? It's, it's okay. And if you fall behind, it's okay because I'm behind a couple days. Maybe a few days, actually. <laughs> but I wanted to play that because as Debbie's already done, she's already reading out of Proverbs 31, which I'm going to read out of Proverbs 31 today because it's a good passage for Mother's Day. But let's start with prayer. Father in heaven, we do thank you and praise you for you are a glorious, faithful, loving, fair, and just God. And we thank you for all of your creation. May we as the video understand that we live in your creation, that we were created for your will and your purpose. May we bring honor and glory to you. May we live by the power of the Spirit because Jesus Christ laid down his life so that we could be justified and set right, so that we could be sanctified, set apart, and made holy and tell the world of the faith that we have in, in Jesus Christ. We thank you and praise you. In his precious name we pray. Amen. So I entitled this message, A Mother's Influence, because I want each and every mother here to realize that your children are watching you. It's God's design. He gave them to you. The miracle of birth, that we would have sons and daughters, and they are watching what we are telling them and what we are doing. When we are inconsistent, oh, they know it. Just watch Kira or, or even watch older. They know the inconsistencies in our lives. So there is the purpose therein of Proverbs to realize that we need to live what we say that we believe. And as our, in our readings thus far, we've seen how the Israelites failed so much at that. And when I read that, it reminds me of how much I've failed at that. But still, when you realize you failed, just like David did, just like Solomon did, when they realized they failed, they came to God and laid that before Him. And He forgave them and raised them up so that they could continue to walk this way of the truth and the life that comes through Jesus Christ. So, Proverbs 31 starts out with King Lemuel. I'll do it with Costa Rican sound. Le Lemuel. Okay, I don't know. I got off the plane and we were in Dallas and we went to a restaurant. And they brought our check, and I said, gracias. <laughs> so I'll probably be doing that for a while. But anyway, who is this king? Proverbs 31.1 says the sayings of King Lemuel. In the video, and I disagree with the video here, he said it was a foreign king. I don't know. Maybe it was. There's no proof of that. So that's why I say I disagree with it. We don't, my answer would be we don't know. Some say that it was Hezekiah. Some say that it was Solomon because he wrote most of the other passages. Maybe that was his mother's pet name for him. I don't know. If it was, I know this. I know who his mother was. I know his mother was Bathsheba. Oh, wait a minute. She wasn't that great of a woman, was she? Well, David wasn't that great of a man, was he? But through God's power and might and our relying on him, both are in the lineage of Christ, of course. It was in God's plan. So maybe it is Solomon. We don't know. What we do know from reading that it is inspired by God. This is an inspired piece of Scripture to teach us. And Proverbs 31 is the closing chapter of this book. It's the conclusion. And as we notice from the video, we start with a father's instruction, but we end Proverbs with how much a mother impacted 
the development of a child who grew up to be a noble, righteous, godly king, whoever he is. So the point is not who the king is. The point is that his father trained him up and his mother walked side by side his father in training the child and he contributes who he is to his mother. What an important role each and every one of you mothers play. Psalms 127 reads this way, Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guard stands watch in vain. This is God's created world. You are His creation. And if you have been saved, born again by the blood of Jesus Christ, then you've been purchased back and your life living it for God is even more important. Verse 2, In vain you rise up, you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat, and how we toil for so many more things in life. But He is the one that grants the sleep to those He loves. You won't find peace in the things of this world. You won't find happiness in the things of this world. They will let you down. But you will find strength, peace, comfort, eternal life in God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Verse 3, children are a heritage from the Lord, so don't forget that. God gave you the children you have and gave you the responsibilities of raising those children up. It is your heritage. They are an offspring, a reward from Him. Verse 4, like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in court. We don't know who this king is, but we do know that little boys need a godly mother to show them how to live. Oh, the importance of a godly mother, the inspiration that they have on little boys and girls. That relationship that we're taught by the mother in how to live this life, how to relate to our wives, how to relate to our children, how to relate to others, all comes from that mother son relationship mother daughter relationship but who was this king not the focus <laughs> who knows who he is doesn't matter who the mother is who can tell me here who mrs noah was <laughs> but if mrs noah didn't walk beside noah would things have turned out the way they turned out not every child followed. You understand that from the understanding of the video in Proverbs. These, are, these aren't things you can hold on to in doctrine. But they are the things that if you follow after these ways, that's the way it should be. And I'll bank on those. I'll put my trust in those. That to fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That if I do train up a child in the ways of the Lord, he won't depart from it. But remember what training means in the first place. It doesn't mean just telling them about it. It means as Jesus summed up, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Because then they'll see that your faith is genuine. And if they see that your faith is genuine, then probabilities are that they won't depart from it, that they'll walk in the faith that you have. When they see your inconsistencies, what do you think their faith might turn out to be? When they say, see that you say one thing but do another, look at it in just this world. What happens then? Oh, I'm going to punish you with this if you don't do it, and then you don't follow through. Then their behavior becomes worse, generally speaking. So I'm going to put my faith in God, and I'm going to trust in Him and acknowledge Him and be thankful and train up my children to follow in His ways. Psalm 127, 1 and 2, to repeat it again. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. In vain you, mothers and fathers, every one of us, in vain you rise up early and stay up late, toiling for the things that you desire, changing it a little bit. But he's the one that grants all things. He is the one that feeds the sparrows. It gives them a nest. He's the one that brings rain to the land, to the wicked as well as the righteous. 
God is so gracious and draws all men to come to Him through Jesus Christ. So do you know Jesus Christ? And how are you living your life for Him, mothers, especially for today? This king, whoever he was, turned out to be a godly man, a godly king, based on the influence his mother had. That wraps up Proverbs. All of these things that come to this point say that this king, whoever he is, and respected and gets this proverb in as the conclusion to the writing, whoever he is, had a godly mother that helped him get to that point whoever she was. A mother's influence is so important. But what does fearing the Lord your God mean? This is from an article found in Christianity Today called What Does It Mean to Fear God by Johannan Reardon. I often hear people explain the fear of the Lord as a mere respect or reverence. But the Bible uses the word at least 300 times in reference to God, 20 in Proverbs. So we make a mistake when we downplay it. The subject becomes even more mysterious when we read things like 1 John 4, 1 John 4 18 that says that perfect love expels fear. Is this a contradiction? What does this mean? So how do we marry this dichotomy, this two-part thing that we have here? How can we fear God while He expels all of our fears? It's a hard thing to understand, isn't it? But I've said it before, with my analogy, the best way I can understand it, I feared that belt from my father growing up. And I responded to that. Oh, I think that's a proverb, isn't it? <laughs> I didn't understand how much he loved me. But as I matured and growed, grew, I learned more and more that my father did do the things that he did in disciplining me so that I wouldn't go further down the wrong path. And if I stayed on the path to begin with, I probably never would have got the disciplining in the first place, would I? It wasn't his purpose to, to, to bring judgment and punishment upon me. It was his purpose to train me up to be a man, to have integrity, to treat my wife with respect. He didn't train me as much as he should in the ways of the Lord. He missed that point. But he trained me in good ways. I wish he would have trained me more in the ways of the Lord rather than the ways of business. Because that means so much more when we build up treasures in heaven rather than treasures on earth. Because they can be gone like that. So we need to live each and every day training our children to follow God's ways, His plan, His design. And how much more do we need to because His Son laid down His life for us. 300 times you read about the fear to fear the Lord in the Bible. 20 alone in Proverbs. The first one is found in Proverbs 1-7. So I'm going to start with the first proverb. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. For gaining wisdom and instruction. This is why we have these. To gain wisdom and instruction. Also for understanding words of insight, for receiving instructions in prudent behavior, for doing what is right, what is just, what is fair, for giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and direction to the young. Let the wise listen. You can't get too wise. Let them listen and add to their learning. And let the discerning get guidance. For understanding proverbs and parables, the sayings and the riddles of the wise. This is written by Solomon, the wisest of all men, who prayed this prayer to give me wisdom so that I can lead your people, God, your children. But yet, even with all that wisdom, he made mistake after mistake after mistake. So when he wrote Ecclesiastes, he said, all of this is meaningless. All these things are meaningless. But loving the Lord and focusing on Him and living your life for Him... That's what matters. And by doing that, your children will see your faith. And probabilities are, they'll walk in those steps. Verse 7, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of this knowledge. But, complete opposition, fools, oh, we don't like that word. My mama told me not to say that word. <laughs> 
But fools despise wisdom, and they despise instruction. So therefore, listen, my son, to your father's instructions. And then it ends, right? Nope. And do not forsake your mother's teaching. Because before sin ever entered into this world, God created man, and from man he created woman to walk hand in hand in this world, taking care of this creation that we were given to, to rule over and to raise up our children, that miracle that we, <laughs> we didn't do anything to, to birth them, especially anything that would have been hard <laughs> or, or cumbersome or anything else, but something that would be pleasurable, and from that God would give us children, a heritage, to train them up. Wow, what a gracious God. And even when we sinned, then there became pains in birth. But the pains in the birth are worth it, aren't they? The pains of, that the child will bring you in life are worth it. But how much more is it worth it to walk in a godly manner fearing the Lord so that you can put your faith and trust in Him in the outcome? That He can watch over your children because they were His in the first place. They were on loan to you. Mothers, what are you teaching your children? They need you to teach them in word and in every action of your life to fear the Lord, to love Him with all your heart, mind, soul, body, and strength. Your teachings are meaningless without your actions. Verse 9 says, They are a garland to grace your head and a chain to adorn your neck. And we're going to see that in verse 31 that that's repeated. My son, if sin, sinful men entice you, do not give in to them. If they say, come along with us, let's lie and wait for innocent blood. Let's ambush some harmless soul. Let's swallow them alive like the grave and whole, like those who go down to the pit. We will get all sorts of valuable things and fill our houses with plunder. Cast lots with us. We all share the loot. My sons, do not go along with them. Do not set foot on their paths. For they, their feet rush into evil. They are swift to shed blood. How useless to spread a net where every bird can see it. These men lie in wait for their own blood. They ambush only themselves. Such are the paths of all who go after ill-gotten gain. It takes away the life of those who get it. You've got a father telling his son to beware and already including his mother in it. And these words are from Solomon. Verse 20, out in the open, wisdom calls aloud. And I see what Solomon says about wisdom. She raises her voice in the public square. He's already bringing the conclusion of, the, of all the Proverbs, going back to the motherly influence. Every characteristic that a mother has is given to her by God to teach her children to love her husband, to live a life of worth. Out in the open, wisdom calls aloud. She raises her voice in the public square. Verse 21, on top of the wall, she cries out. At the city gate, she makes her speech. Solomon didn't have to change it to a feminine, but he did. Because he wanted the child, the father, the husband, the wife, the mother to realize this relationship that we have this responsibility that we have as created beings. And the mother is just as important and necessary in the relationship as the father. I've told you before my motto verse. It didn't used to be, but it is now. It's Hebrews 11, 7. And this is the NIV. By faith Noah, with Mrs. Noah walking beside. I put that up there because she was there. When warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, he built an ark to save his family. That prepositional phrase ties everything else before that. Yes, he did it out of holy fear. Yes, he did it when he was warned. Yes, he had to have faith, not sight, to do this. Didn't even know what a boat was, potentially. But he did it out of holy fear, and he did it for the impact to save his family's life so that they could enter into the shape safety of a temporary ark. How much more should you live to save your children for all eternity? Forever and ever and ever. The amount of life we have is so minuscule compared to what that future holds for us. Without Mrs. Noah 
playing her vital role, I just wonder how that would have played out. Scripture doesn't tell us, but I know that she walked beside of him because I see the outcome of the story. We don't even know her name. Tradition has it, other literature has it, but we don't know her name. And let me break down that verse for, for you. Warned of God, moved with holy fear, the fear that Proverbs talks about, the fear of knowing an almighty, powerful, just, just, justifying, perfect, loving, kind, punishing God. Not out of fear of punishment, but out of who He is. Because I don't fear Him in that punishment already. Because I am counted righteous because of Jesus' blood. But I still fear Him with a reverence and awe that, de that is deserving of Him. And as of that, Noah condemned the world. Didn't matter how long, didn't matter the ridicule, didn't ma matter anything else. The task that stood before Him, the probability that this might not even happen because I don't even know what rain is but I know the probability of following God I've learned that no matter how attractive it looked to not do the task set before him he condemned the actions of the world and Noah became an heir of righteousness by his faith wow and this holy fear teaches his wife, teaches his children, which his wife helps him in that relationship to train up his children. Probabilities, not promises. We know that two out of three sons, we don't know how many daughters, daughter-in-laws, followed after their ways because they set the pattern. So I want to fear the Lord. Proverbs 1, verse 7 and 8 to fear the Lord because it is the beginning of knowledge instead of being a fool and despising wisdom and instruction. I want to listen and obey, we learned that before, to my father's instructions and not to forsake my mother's teaching. So what does Proverbs 31 say about a godly woman? This king who wrote this proverb. Here's what it says. The sayings of King Lemuel, Le Lemuel an inspired utterance, we've got that in there, that his mother taught him. Listen, my son, listen, son of my womb, listen, my son, the answer to my prayers. Very similar to Proverbs 1, but this is the mother talking instead of the father. She gives him similar instructions. Verse 3, do not spend your strength on women, your vigor on those who ruin kings. It is not for, for kings. Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, not for rulers to crave beer, lest they drink and forget what has been decreed, and deprive all the oppressed of their rights. Let beer be for those who are perishing, wine for those who are in anguish. Let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no more. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and needy. This is the instruction she gives him. Then he writes back, or this is her instructions. We don't know what it is exactly. We find out about this woman of integrity that taught her son to be a man of integrity. Verse 10, a wife of noble character who can find she is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her task. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand she holds this staff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. 
When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate, where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchant with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dig dignity. She laughs at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her, her husband also and he praises her verse 29 many women do noble things but you surpass them all wouldn't that be something you'd like to hear from your children and from God on that day because she lived her faith she walked by faith and lived her faith doesn't say that the husband helped her here we don't know that it says what she did because I'm not accountable for what my wife does. I'm accountable for what I do. You're not accountable for what your neighbor does. You're accountable for what you do. The devil doesn't make you do wrong. He has no power over you. It was finished and completed on the cross. Cross. Amen? You have the power. You make every choice in your life to have the faith that you have and live it or not. And if you do, this is what Proverbs is saying, the outcome will most likely look like. Verse 30, charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. So sons and daughters, you're up here now, and we're here too, the ones because we have mothers. We wouldn't be here if we didn't have a mother. <laughs> Honor her. For all that her hands have done, and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. Well, what if all she done, has done is not much? Praise her just the same. It's the mother that God gave you. And the more that you praise her, even if she is not worthy of praise, maybe the more that she will see God's love through you. Be the example. Oh, the value of a God-fearing woman who teaches this to, to her children. Now I want to read part of that from the message, just the part about the mother. A good woman is hard to find. This is starting in verse 10. And worth far more than diamonds, her husband trusts her without reserve and never has reason to regret it. Never spiteful, she treats him generously all her life long. She shops around for the, for the best yams and cottons and enjoys knitting and sewing. She's like a trading ship that sails to a faraway places and brings back exotic surprises. She's up before dawn preparing breakfast for her family and organizing her day. She looks over a field and buys it. Then with money she's put aside, she plants a garden. First thing in the morning, she dresses for work, rolls up her sleeves, eager to get started. She senses the worth of her work. Is in no hurry to call it quit for the, de for the day. She's skilled in the crafts of home and hearth, diligent in homemaking. She's quick to assist anyone in need, reaches out to help the poor. She doesn't worry about her family when it snows. Their winter clothes are all mended and ready to wear. She makes her own clothing and dresses in colorful linens and silks. Her husband is greatly respected when he deliber deliberates, deliberates thank you, with the city's fathers. She designs gowns and sells them, bringing the sweater she knits to the dress shops. Her clothes are well made and elegant and she always faces tomorrow with a smile. When she speaks, she has something worthwhile to say and she always says it kindly. She keeps an eye on everyone in her house and keeps them all busy and productive. Her children respect and bless her. Her husband joins in with the words of praise. Many women have done wonderful things, but you've outclassed them all. Charms can mislead and beauty soon fades. The woman to be admired and praised is the woman who lives in the fear of God. Give her everything she deserves. Festoon or put a garland of flowers around her. Her life with praises. I know sometimes you say, <laughs> that's out of reach. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I understand that's what it should be. But I had a bad day yesterday. Yep, we all do. Thank God for the goodness in it. That you still have life that He did bless you with children. Fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our souls. Because He is the one that, was, though was equal with God, 
considered it nothing to lay down his life for you to be in submission. So wives, submit to your husband. Raise your children. Be this godly example. Read this proverb over and over and the rest of the proverbs that live up, lead up to this so that you can lead a life of worth. And not only hear from your children, but hear from God what a blessed mother you have been, what a loving wife you've been, what a life you have led of worth. Well done, my good and faithful servant. In closing, I want to read you a little bit more from that article in Christianity Today, What Does It Mean to Fear God? As I walk with the Lord, I discover that God possesses an ominous threat to my ego, but not to me. He rescues me from my delusions so that He may reveal His truth and set me free. He casts me down only to lift me up higher. He sits in judgment of my sin, but forgives me nevertheless. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, but love from the Lord is its completion. Maybe you understand that a little better. And of course, the ultimate example of fear and perfect love working together is Jesus Christ. He warned us at every turn to fear God rather than men, and He confirmed that in everything about His life and His sacrificial death. God bless you, mothers. Happy Mother's Day. Now, where's Rona? William, you want to lead it? Yeah, start handing out. We have a special gift for you mothers. Come on, children, help them. Who else has got a tray? The kids have made wind chimes for you for Mother's Day, and we also have some bookmarks. Happy Mother's Day.